Lord, your joy is my joy. Lord, your strength is my strength. You fill my heart with songs of praise. Lord, your peace is my peace. Lord, your way. Rejoice in the Lord. Lord. He's a good God. He is mm. faithful to His promises. Yeah, we rejoice in the Lord because He is a good God. And we thank Him and we praise Him with songs like this because of His faithfulness. You know, rejoicing in the Lord is a choice that you can make. You know, it's not something you do just because you feel like doing it. Sometimes you don't feel like rejoicing. Mm. You know, in times of, you know, problems or times of loneliness sometimes. Mm. But you know, uh, rejoicing in the Lord is a decision that yeah. you can make. It's a decision do. that you make. And you know, like the uh, story that we did previously about how Paul and Silas, they rejoiced in prison, even when they were, you know, had you know, blood on their backs and they were fully chained up. They still start to sing praises to the Lord and start to rejoice in Him. And God turned that situation around by mm. setting them free from every bondage. Yeah. And you know, just, just like God did for Paul and Silas, he can do that for you too. Yeah. You can believe that God wants to set you free from every bondage. Amen. He yeah. Does. And we've been talking about thankfulness and how, you know, being a thankful person can really change your life. Yeah. And really you start to see things different. You start to see God different when you start thanking mm. him for all the things that he has mm. done. 
just a recap yeah. of whatever we've been doing. You know, in thankfulness, we spoke about how you can thank God in praise and worship yeah. and how you can thank God in uh, your prayer life. Mm. When you wake up in the morning, you can just say, Lord, I thank you for making me. Mm. And thank you that I'm created in your image, that I'm special. You know, and then you can also thank God. We spoke about how um, sometimes we think of other people and we thank them, you know, but when it comes to family, sometimes we forget to say thank you for all the good things that, for just being there, you know, family mm. members. And um, you can thank your family members because God has given you, one of the greatest gifts that God has blessed us with is a good family. Yeah. And if you don't have a family, if you don't have a mother or a father, you know, you can find somebody who can be around you yeah. and be like a mother or a father to you who is going to be there for you. And yeah. you can say, thank you, Lord, for this person that you've put in my life to be a blessing to me. Mm. And um, we also spoke about how you can pray, you know, thank God even before the need of a situation yeah. has arrived. Or, or you can thank Him for the answer yeah. to your prayer, like Jesus prayed. And in w Lazarus, when he was uh, dead, Jesus said, Father, I thank you that you have always heard me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, he started his prayer knowing that God already mm -hmm. heard him. You that's know, praying in faith, yeah. not praying in fear. Yeah, not praying in fear. Yeah. Yeah, actually, when you know, when you start thanking God that way, and you start praying that way, um, you know, it'll drive out all fear in your life. When you start thanking God for the answer, because that's what you believe to see. You want the answer. You you believe for healing, and you start thanking Him for healing instead of saying, "God, I don't know, this sickness might, you know, just might hurt me. Just it might, um, you know, affect me." That's for, praying in fear. That's praying in fear. But you can start praying in faith and, you know, start thanking God for the healing that He has already given to you. Yeah. And, um, you know, last time we were talking about um, also like the story of Lazarus and Paul and Silas and how when things were going wrong, they started to thank God for the answer. They started to sing praises. Mm. You know, even the song that we were just singing, the line that says, I will rejoice. Yeah. You know, we repeated that line, I will rejoice. I will rejoice. Now, you know, rejoicing and joy, you know, you're not always going to feel like doing it. You know, I, there are times I don't feel like rejoicing either. You just don't feel like rejoicing. Uh, either your feelings just don't want to rejoice or because something has happened, you don't want to rejoice. But, you know, joy is something that it, it just works. It's not something that is dependent on our feelings. Mm. It's something that comes out of our spirit. Yeah. See, when Paul and Silas were in jail, there was no reason to rejoice whatsoever. You can't, you, there's no joy in a prison. But they made a choice at midnight to rejoice. Yeah. And see what the joy brought them to. It brought them deliverance. It set them free. The chains were broken. Mm. You know, you could be going through a midnight situation in your life. Something that's really disturbing. And at that point, you can just say, okay, I know that I'm feeling this way, but I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to start rejoicing in my God. I'm just going to tell God how faithful He is to me. I'm going to just tell God that His mercy endures forever. If you yeah. start doing that, you're going to come out of that situation by rejoicing. Mm. That will just change everything in your life. Mm. Now, it might sound very simple. Like, is that really simple? Can I come out of this bondage by rejoicing? Yes, you can. Yeah. You can get set free from bondage. That's mm. what God wants you to know today. Is that joy is, is a force that's going to set you free from every bondage. Yeah. And maybe it's yeah. something like protection yeah. in your life. You can thank God for protecting you. Wherever you go, maybe you're going in the bus or in the car or you're walking, you can say, Lord, I thank you that you are with me. Yeah. You promised to never leave me nor forsake me. And I thank you that you can take promises like this and... Uh, I think we spoke about this earlier in Exodus, how He has blessed your food and water mm. and taken sickness and disease away from you. Yeah. And um, that you will fulfill the number of your days in health. You don't have to perish early. Mm. You can say, Lord, I thank you that you have promised to bless the food that I eat mm. and I will not curse it. It shall go in and come out yeah. at the right time. Yeah. And then in Exodus, it also says that He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, your healer. Mm. You don't have to be scared about the diseases that are going around and things that are happening in your neighborhood or in places that you go. You can say, Lord, you have given me a promise to protect me. In Psalm, it says, there shall no evil befall you, mm. neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. A good for promise. He has sent His angels to protect you. Mm. In times of um, 
fear, you know, when, when you're gripped with fear, you can say, Lord, I thank you that your angels are with me. I don't have to be afraid. Yeah. I don't have to be alone because you are with me. Yeah. Immediately when those fearful thoughts come into your mind and you start thinking, well, it's not safe. I don't know what to do. Mm. And maybe, maybe, you know, something's going to happen to me. Merely stop and remind yourself of this scripture. Lord, you said in your word that you have given angels all around me. You, you don't have mm. to see them, but they're still there. They're working around you. You know, that's, that's another way you can put thankfulness in your life, incorporate. We saw how to, you know, use thankfulness uh, when things seem to go wrong in your life and how to use it when, when you're faced with sickness, you can start thanking God for healing. Mm. And, uh, you know, the, sometimes when you, when you have results on an exam or something like that, you can start thanking God that He's not going to fail you, nor forsake you. Yeah. And another way you can use thankfulness is in protection. Thanking God for protection. Mm. Instead of saying, God, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, you're, you're putting fear in the whole thing. Yeah. Instead of praying like that, you can say, Lord, according to Psalm 91, 11, you've said that your angels are all around me, protecting me and keeping me safe. Mm. You thank Him for the angels that He has given you. Yeah. Thanking Him for protection. That's pretty important yeah. to or do. Sometimes when you hear bad news and you get alarmed, yeah. you get shocked. Sometimes you think, hey, maybe that's going to happen to me as well. What mm. happened to those people? It could happen to me. Yeah. And you get fearful. But instead of you know, being afraid, you can say, Lord, you have given me a promise mm. that I'm not going to be afraid. You are with me. You mm. can say stuff yeah. like that. And, and what you can also do is pray for people who are affected you know, by yeah. tragedy or something like that, it, it causes you to n focus on the Lord and yeah. on His grace. That's right. And because He's a faithful God, He's a good God, and we need to remember that. Yeah. And so whatever, maybe you heard a, uh, something um, in the news and you hear bad news and you can just say, Lord, I thank you that you are protecting me and I pray for those who are even affected by it, that you are with them. Yeah. Those are ways of, you know, praying bold prayers, praying confident prayers, not just, um, you know, always talking the negative because just by talking, whatever is going around in the negative sometimes doesn't change. Mm. It just stays the same. It only brings fear into your life. Brings fear. You know? Yeah. And, and when you hear that bad news, immediately you can respond in faith mm. and you can start saying, Father, I thank you that your angels are all around me. And even as you were saying, praying for those who are affected, because you know some of them, they could come out of that situation yeah, while you're praying for them. Prayer you is know, powerful. It's pretty powerful. Yeah. And when you pray it the right way, praying it in faith instead of fear. You start with thanksgiving and say, mm. thank you, Father, that you're protecting me. Thank you for your angels surrounding me. When you're getting into the car or you're walking or something, you just start thanking God for the angels. Yeah. You thank Him that you thank Him that He is with you wherever you go. Because it's, yeah. it's a force. Fear is a force and faith mm. is also a force. Yeah. And you can be operating in either one of them. Mm. You know, if you're in fear, the scripture says what you fear sometimes can come upon you. Mm. And there was this man called Job in the Bible and he feared. Yeah. Ev I mean, a lot of things he feared and, and a lot of bad things happened to him. Mm. But you can say, I'm not going to be afraid um, because God has given me a promise. You can mm. read that in, in Job. I don't remember exactly how the scripture goes, but it says um, what he greatly feared came upon yeah. him. And so if, if fear can work that way, so can faith. Definitely. You, know, you can believe God for protection. If you are afraid and, you know, if that fear works, mm. why not believe in faith that you can cast all your care upon the Lord yeah. for He cares for you. He's your protector. Start believing the positive. Yeah. And you have to make a firm decision that you're gonna, you know, you're gonna do it in faith, yeah. because when when you when you see things like this happening, it, it's gonna be a choice that you have to make to rejoice, because re joy it, it's there inside of you when you when you receive Jesus, joy is there. But the way you're gonna draw out that joy is by you speaking His word out of your mouth, mm. by saying, "I will rejoice. I'm gonna rejoice in the Lord my God because He said in His word to mm. rejoice," and um, you know. Another good thing that you can thank the Lord for is, we've, just like we discussed about thanking Him for protection, you can also thank Him for who He has made you to be. What an awesome thing to do. Yeah. Thank God for who He has made you to be. Amen. You know, maybe some of you out there and you think you're not valuable, you think you're not important, and um, you compare yourselves with others, and you think others are better than you. Well, stop doing that. Because if you had to be somebody else, God would have made you that person. Yeah. But God made you who you are. And that's something that you can start thanking Him for. Because, you know, um, what happens is when you put yourself down, you're actually, you're telling God, God, you didn't, you didn't do a good job making me. 
you know, you made a mistake by creating me. And, you know, in God's eyes, there are no mistakes. You know, no. God has made everybody unique and special. Let me read to you a verse that will really encourage you to know that um, God has made you valuable. And this is something you can thank Him for. In Psalm 139, 14, this is what it says. David says, I will praise you. See, there's again thankfulness and praise to the Lord. Now, what is he thanking and praising God for? For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm. Marvelous are your works, and my soul knows right well. See, David is just telling God, thank you for making me me. Yeah. Thank you for making me special. Thank you for making me wonderful. Yeah. You know, sometimes we thank God for you know, others, and that's great. I mean, we should do that as much as we do that. But thank God for who He's made yeah. you to be. That's very, very important. You are unique. Yeah. You are special. There is nobody like you yeah. on this earth. God has created you to be a special person. Mm. And you go, you go before the mirror and you look and say, that person is special. Mm. God created that person just because He loves that person. Yeah. You look at yourself and you say that. Yeah. And you love the creation that God has created. Because if you despise yourself, what you're saying is, God, you didn't do a good job. Yeah. And you said that, right? Yeah, I said that. Yeah. And so, but don't despise yourself. Yeah. But God has created you special. All of us are unique beings. Mm. And all of us have been given gifts and talents uniquely. You may be having a gift and a talent and ability that somebody else doesn't have, yeah. but that somebody else needs. Mm. And that's why we are called the body of Christ. Mm. And God has put us like members in this body are fitted together. And if we didn't have the eyes and the hands doing its job, you know, it would be chaos. Yeah. It would be confusion. That's the way God has put us in the body of Christ to do special and unique things mm. that somebody else cannot yeah. do. Yeah, that's something really important to do. If you have a really poor self-image and you think you're not valuable enough, take this verse from Psalm 139:14 and begin to say, Father, I praise you. I want to thank you that you have that you've made me wonderfully. When you, when you made me, you created me with such, um, with, with such of every, with all Love. your heart. That's yeah. how you created me. That's what it says here, fearfully and wonderfully. He took time to create you. Just, just think about that. Because, um, you know, when you read the, the beginning in the book of Genesis, it says that God created all the animals and, you know, He created the, um, the mountains and the trees and everything. But then, towards the end, we see that God made man. And when he made man in the end, he looked at man and said, man, this is very good. Yeah. This is my very best creation. That's what he was saying. Yeah. He looked at everything else and said, you know, everything else is very good. Oh, it's good rather. But when he looked at man, he said, this is very good. Yeah. And that's what God is saying to you today is that he has made you very good. Right? He has made you unique and special. And that's something you need to do and thank him. And maybe you can just start to lift your hands and say, Father, I'm thankful that you created me. Just like yes. you said in this psalm, thank you for making me so wonderful. Thank you for making me special. Mm. Thank you for making me valuable and that I'm unique in your, in your sight. Yeah. So we're going to pray a prayer with you. If you don't know that you're valuable and special to God, you can begin to repeat this prayer and it'll actually encourage your own self to know that you are unique in God's sight. So let's pray. Let's say it together. I'll, I'll say it and Shalom will repeat it. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For making me special. For making me special. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For creating me. For creating me. So unique. So unique. I am your prized possession. I am your prized possession. I have been bought with your price. I have been bought with your price. The precious blood of Jesus. The precious blood of Jesus. I will not call myself unworthy. I will not call myself unworthy. Or disregard myself. Or disregard myself. I remember that you made me. I remember that you made me. And that I'm unique in your sight. And that I'm unique in your sight. I praise you, Father. I praise you, Father. For making me for me. For making me me. I encourage myself. I encourage myself with your word with your word knowing that I'm special knowing that I'm special in Jesus name in Jesus name Amen Amen you know, just saying simple words like that can change your perspective of who you are yeah. begin to thank God for who he's made you to be so even as we talked about thanking the Lord for protection and we also spoke today about thanking the Lord for who he's made you to be you know, this can change your life completely when you start having an attitude of thanksgiving towards the Lord so enjoy your day knowing that God is with you and that you are special in His sight.